Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Riverdale Recap. I am Matthew, of course, joined by my wonderful co-host and best friend. Hello. Hey man, lovely to see you. So um, on today's show, we are back reviewing what is episode six of the fifth season of Riverdale. So I'm going to pass over to Callum to explain what's been going on in today's episode. So yeah, off to you, man. Well, you know, we return to the storyline of Hiram Lodge uh, effectively closing down the town of Riverdale, uh, we do. We do. disincorporating it, I think, I think is the word, or unincorporated, unincorporating, uh, I think, I think is the, the word that they use, uh, you know, to just, just pave, pave the way for his newly built town, so deal. Uh, Veronica's husband returns to Riverdale, or, uh, come, comes there for the first time to sh- shake things up, uh, you know, and be a dickhead, basically. Yeah, good old uh, and we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk about some, some things that they got up to. I would say those are the big those are the big events of the of the episode. But really, you know, what well, one sort of thing that I think will carry over for the rest of the season is Jughead encounters a new story that, that potentially alludes to a new foe in the Mothman. Yeah. Uh, and I I think that I think that'll be a talk a topic of conversation uh, I think for episodes so. to come. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So yeah, as Callum said, we're going to be addressing um, spoilers here as well. So as as with our previous review caps, you know, full spoilers as well. If you've seen, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen the episode anyway. But um, but yeah, just before we kick off, thanks to everyone who supported us recently. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts down below. We'd really love to hear them. And of course, our time codes and our emails in the description below as well. So Callum, uh, if you want to, you want to open the floor, man, with your notes. Well, at the beginning of the episode, you know, we're once again introduced back, back into Tony Fangs and uh, Kevin. And we, yeah. we see now that Tony is now living uh, with, with Kevin and Fangs. And initially, you know, we, we had talked about, you know, the potential father for, uh, you know, for Tony's baby. And initially I thought it was maybe Reggie's that, you know, uh, was yes. also Tony's baby. But now, based on what we see here, the sort of, uh, you know, d- domestic lifestyle that we see between the three of them, I'm not thinking that, that Tony may be acting as a as a, as a surrogate to, to Fangs yeah. and Kevin. I think that's a really good shout, a really, really good shout. It kind of seems like Fangs and Kevin are sort of having a lot more screen time recently as well. And, um, and you know, I, I, I've saw on like the Riverdale channel, they're doing like the time jump information for each character. And uh, I think Fang, the character of Fangs and also Kevin got their own, which probably suggests they're kind of going to be main characters. So they are, which is which is nice to see. You know, I was I was a big fan of their relationship in the show and uh, and of course Tony's always great and uh, like like we were kind of saying as well in the in this episode uh Chad comes back as well and he obviously Veronica's Veronica's husband and you know I, I, at the start of the episode I, I was kind of a little bit sympathetic towards him you know I kind of thought oh you know he's, he's made the journey from New York he seems like he does love Veronica but as the as the episode slowly progresses you kind of see like he's, he's kind of a bit manipulative you know he's quite like Hiram in that sense and I just wanted to hear your thoughts, like, what, because what, what are you standing on? Because I'm not, I'm undecided yet. I can't tell if they're going to make him full evil or not. What do you think? Well, you know, I, I think he, he clearly loves Veronica, but, but he doesn't want the, the love to go around. You know, he's clearly very yeah. uh, territorial. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't like seeing anyone else like her in the way that he likes her. Uh, you know, he takes an instant resentment towards Archie. So I, I think that you know, he, he's going to be slowly faded out of. Uh, out of Veronica's life, I, I think the marriage is is going to be over rather quickly. But you know, I think we'll mm-hmm. probably see the the end of that relationship, and then yeah. probably him uh, move to Hiram's side. I'd say. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a really good shot. Yeah, I think it's a really really good shot. And obviously, one one aspect of this episode I was not expecting whatsoever is the beautiful rendition of Shallow from, <laughs> from the two of them. It's got to be one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in the in the last couple of seasons of Riverdale because Chad has a lovely musical number there. He's actually surprisingly not bad. I thought I thought it was decent. <laughs> Are you, are you saying that Chad was decent? Yeah, I thought he was okay. I thought, he, like, he, obviously he's no Bradley Cooper, but he's, yeah. He, mm. What do you think? What? See, I, I thought Veronica's side was probably one of the better vocal performances that we've seen, Yeah, uh, you know, within the within the show. And, like, I, th- I think that's mainly down to the, the auto-tune being, uh, you know, not so <laughs> obvious. But as soon as, soon as Ch- Chad joined in, it was, it was just painful. Yeah, yeah. But I think Camille Mendes is quite talented, um, you know, as well. Obviously, there's going to be a certain auto tune, a bit of bits of auto tune there. They're not like professional singers, but I think I thought her her part was very good. Yeah, I think you're right, definitely. 
sorry like you, you, you can cut this out i'm just a bit, a bit breathless i did just finished i finished dinner like 10 minutes no ago. you're okay a, don't worry about it mate a curry it. yeah no do, oh, very do, nice. do you ever get when you're just a bit you're just a bit breathless yeah no all the time yeah all the time yeah like i've, I've been eating a lot of chicken lately please, please uh, do cut this out no problem no worries but yeah no I, I know what you mean all the time all the time so within this episode i will see the continuation of archie and betty's friends with benefits relationship and yeah. You know, it the it just contains a, a multitude of logical lapses. You know, uh, according to Betty, you know, ha- having sex in Archie's actual house, you know, feels wrong to her. But having in sex school. in the school where she works is a okay. A okay, and they they just so happen to be there when a fire is caused in the school by some Stonewall prep students. And fi- fire seems thank to God. be a, yeah yeah I know. And thank fire, God they were having sex in the yeah, car. I know. Thank God they saved it. Yeah, I know. And um, it, it, fire can, seems to be a, a continuing theme. In this in this episode, because I know this is jumping on a bit, but oh, weirdly, you know, when when Reggie and Hiram say, you know, yeah, how about we hit Archie back? I was expecting, you know, maybe like they they ambush him outside, you know, El Royale gym, give him a bit of a beating or something. It just weirdly, instead of setting his actual house in fire, they just set like they just uh, the perimeter of house they just set in fire. So like it's it's quite a strange move. I suppose it's to close them in so they can't maybe escape. But yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a very 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 weird move, like a weird one. Yeah, the episode. I, I think it's more more so to like send a message uh, mm. that say, says like don't, don't fuck with us. Like I, I don't know that he was actively trying to kill them. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad he didn't. I'm glad he didn't. But like I don't know, Reggie's a little bit. Re- I don't know. Maybe they I think they've maybe ruined Reggie now. I, I, I don't see any redemption for him. It's too late. I mean, you you sort of saw good in him when when I don't think anyone else would. You know, he he drugged a bunch of teens and he was he you know constantly like verbally abusive with everyone. And now you know he's setting fires and he's a he's a he's a crime boss you know he's the yeah the whatever the character was called in uh in the godfather part three yeah i don't I, remember i don't remember either <laughs> check out our godfather the podcast, guy played though. by he's he's, he's the andy garcia of, of this show i'm sure i see and okay. you know to, to talk about the the sort of logical lapses when it comes to archie and betty uh you know archie sa- says within this episode that you know he, he he would maybe find it a bit weird asking veronica being his past girlfriend to you know fund the bulldogs this season yeah. uh i mean you know I, th- I think that yeah it makes a bit more sense than uh you know having sex with your your you know best friend's ex-girlfriend yeah. you know I, I'd, yeah. I'd, say, I'd say when it comes to you know moral quandary it, it, it's probably a step above i'll be honest what are you doing archie what are you doing mate i know he needs to get priorities archie priorities mate and also like with the relationships in the show i'm really glad jughead and tabitha seem to be building a wee connection there I think that's really, 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 really smart of, of the show to do. And obviously, one thing that you had mentioned at the start of the episode was about the, the plot of the Mothmen, like these aliens, whatever you want to call them, abducting these truckers. And, you know, uh, coincidentally, it's revealed in the show that uh, three of the four truckers had passed away from cancer. So it's going to be interesting to see, like, what's what's going on here. I actually think this is potentially to be quite an interesting plot line. Obviously, it does sort of uh, bring back memories of, you know, the uh, the Gargoyle King and things like that. But this one seems a little different. Um I'm not sure they could probably get away with going down like that cult aspect again. Um, but I, I don't know. What, what do you, would you see that being like a major plot line for the show going forward? I mean, I think it'll be major, but incredibly underwhelming. You know, I think I think it'll be a big deal and a big letdown. You know, yeah. You, you say you don't you don't know if they can get away with it again, but I mean, they just, they just pedal like the same shit and we eat it up like idiots. You know, okay. it's it's hard okay. to lodge again and again. You know, yeah. he. I mean, I forget that you know the Gargoyle King was you know responsible for you know, a multitude of deaths and, you know, Hiram Lodge was, you know, you know, basically business partners. Uh, I'm just remembering that visual where, you know, this, the, the Gargoyle King like comes up <laughs> behind his chair and he's just sat there like, you know, like, like, a, like a mafia. So, you know, at his, at his desk as though yeah. it's a professional business meeting. Yeah. And, you know, if, if I was to think, you know, what sort of presence the Mothman will have, like to me, you know, I, I think they will just go, go, go about their, their standard Riverdale process, you know, just have them people. be some sort of drug gang that abduct and brainwash people, you know, because they, they keep presenting these like outlandish, otherworldly antagonists, and then the answers are a massive left down every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, I know. Like, I think, I think you're right. I do think it's going to just be the classic sort of drug gang or, or cult or something like that. And, you know, on the, on the subject of like funny Hiram Lodge moments, there was a, there, I don't know if you caught this, but there's a weird moment in today's episode where he's just eating a bag of Doritos. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah, I was like, that man has never eaten a Dorito in his life. <laughs> I know, it's so weird. I mean, like the way he eats it, it's just so strange as he well. He chews it like eight times and <laughs> it's clear that, you know, as soon as they cut that, that camera, you know, they're, they're just tossing a bin to 
uh, Marcus Willows. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so strange. It is so weird. Also in this episode, what really surprised me was that the school secretary, Mrs. Bell, is secretly informing uh, Hiram about like the school's going on. Like I, I expected her to be sort of a, a pure innocent soul, but apparently not. I don't know. Nah, she's she's always she's constantly giving people shit. Like it does not surprise me one one <laughs> bit that she's a dirty rat. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, I, Cheryl is so unlike all these days, man. Honestly, I really don't like her at all now. I don't, I don't, I don't know because I feel like I feel like Archie was a bit manipulative in in bringing uh, Jason into the consideration to be like, yeah, yeah give me money because your dead brother was on the sports team that I'm trying to revive. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I feel, feel like damn, Archie. Yeah. you know, I I feel like Cheryl's nowhere near as unpleasant as Tony. Because you know mm, she sort of, yeah. uh, you know she she selfishly earmarked you know a uh, part of the budget you know for her sport you know you, you would say the equal for Archie but in the end he didn't get to use the, the school's budget so she she did what Archie was trying to do but did it deceptively you know he was very open about his intentions whereas you know she she said you know no sports yeah. no extracurriculars except yeah, for one that I'm in control of yeah I know yeah for sure and obviously with that um, I think it kind of brings up. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, it kind of brings up the argument in the show as to like, are, are Cheryl and Tony going to get back together? I'm not too sure if they will because both both of them, I think, you know, I, I did like Tony earlier on, but this episode, I I, I didn't find her quite unlikable actually. I, it kind of was a bit out of her character. I thought to just hog all the budget for the Vixens. Like, I thought it was really weird. Um, but you know, that being said, I think she's it's a, she's a welcome addition to the main to the main cast. I think in general though. Yeah, because, you know, Riverdale is her home. She, she's the one that sort of drew all these people back. And, you know, Archie yeah. is there and he's brought all the friends here as a, as a favour to her, really, you know, to, yeah. to save the time that she has such an affinity for. Yeah, Because I think, definitely. realistically, all, all of them would just let the, let, let the town burn if, you know, uh, there, was, there wasn't, you know, a lot of people who cared about it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Tony seems to be sort of the most, uh, you know, ar- ardent, you know, supporter of keeping Riverdale, uh, you know, you know, uh, keep keeping the people in Riverdale, keeping the hope within Riverdale. So to sort of just 100%. like, uh, you know, re- really undercut Archie like that, you know, it sort of, it sort of felt like a slap in the face. Dead, not up, kicking the teeth, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Well, I, I have nothing else on the episode, Matthew. Do, do you have anything no, further? No, nothing for me, but I'd love to hear a rating out of 10 for this one. We, it was quite a short review. I think, yeah. I think now that we've sort of uh, we've sort of sidestepped all, all I think, of the, the big moments of, of the season, you know, at least for the you know, near future. I, th- I think we'll, we'll probably have big talking points for the, the mid-season and the finale, but but I think uh, from now on, the, the episodes probably will be a little shorter. You know, I, yeah, I, I think, I think so. there, there may not be as, as many talking points because we're, we're eventually going to see things, you know, un- unfold in the way that we're sort of speculating uh, or have speculated in previous episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, you know, rating it in comparison to the rest of the quality of Riverdale, yeah. still very high when you compare it to the, the first four seasons because so, some of them are, you know, per... Uh, you know, season one and two, season one and two, I think are actually good television. I agree. Um, se- se- season two is yeah. iffy. Uh, season three and four trash. I actually don't know why I kept watching it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I think, I, th- I think, I think the cr- the cringe kept me committed. Uh, but here, I think, I think a lot of viewers are probably going to drop off this season because I think even though it's higher quality television, I think what made it so entertaining is, is gone. You know, yeah, I, I think, think that so. there don't seem to be that many laughs. I'm never like, what, why, did, why have they done this? You know, the most ridiculous thing in this episode are uh, Archie and Betty having sex. And it, I mean, it doesn't not make sense. You know, it's, it's just the yeah. most, the most illogical thing currently within the show. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I feel a bit, I feel less entertained these days, but I have to respect its quality uh, increased. I'd probably yeah. give this episode an eight out of 10. Yeah, no, I I'd have to agree. It's kind of a, a difficult one to, to 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 bridge between like you want it to be kind of cringy as well, but at the same time you want it to be good. So I don't know. Yeah, I think it's at it's at that weird uh, weird place right now where it is good for Riverdale standards, but we, I kind of miss that cringe and that laugh. But that being said, you know, I think episode is a is very very good as well. You know, season five has been really good so far, and I'd probably have to give it probably gonna have to give it any as well. Actually, yeah, for sure. It's um, I'm looking forward to well, things to come. But yeah, I mean. That wraps up another Riverdale recap. Thanks very much for today, buddy. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, yeah, please be sure to check out our Riverdale playlist down, be- uh, down below as well in the playlist section. Uh, with you can see all our um, you know talking points about season four and, and, and of course our season five recaps with our best bud, best bud cash. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that concludes another Riverdale recap. Thanks very much, um, everyone for watching. Hope you guys are all well with your family and friends. You're all safe and well too. Take care and bye-bye. Bye-bye.